Marks on Instagram. So this video is going to answer your questions and pretty much show you my updates. So since last year, I think, I did a video based on my gear last year um, on my crop sensor body. So it's like a D7000 or D7200, something like that. I can't quite remember. But ever since then, I've upgraded to full frame. And yeah, let's get to the video. All right, guys, so let's go to the bag, shall we? So I start off with a small pocket, so the boring stuff. So in here, I have my Lacey Porsche hard drives. It's a two terabyte version, and it's very, very fast. It's literally 100 to 150 megabit, megabit, sorry, megabits per second, read and write, and I have some pens and business cards. And, you know, you gotta have good old business cards for your clients. I'm running out of them actually. So that's just the front pocket, and then here's the laptop pouch. And here, the laptop in there. So let's get through this bag, shall we? And let's start off with my favorite lens of all time. So my favorite lens of all time is the 70 to 200 by Nikon f 2.8. Uh, it's VR2, so it's the generation 2 of vibrate reduction. Um, it's nano coated and it is a bloody sharp lens. It's very fast at focusing, it's oh, pinpoint sharp, tack sharp when you focus correctly, and especially for portraiture, when you lock onto the eyes, oh, all that detail that comes out of this lens. But the only thing that I hate about this lens for portraiture is the focus breathing. To me, it's one of the worst lenses that ever created with focus breathing. Literally, when you focus really close, this thing drops down to about 135 mil at the very long end and about, oh, about 60 mil on the short end. So, focus breathing in this thing is an absolute bum in the ass. So, besides that, it's a great lens. <laughs> Um, that's probably the only cons I've talked about this lens, so hopefully Nikon release a update version of this and update that focus breathing issue because Canon's 70 to 200, boy that thing stays pretty close to this 70 to 200 but this thing just loses focal length like crazy. But once you zoom out further out and your model stands a bit, maybe one step back, that focus breathing is gone. But for tight situations, this thing's a pain in the ass. Um, Next, my workhorse lens for food photography and social photography. This is my Sigma 24-35 f2. Um, it's the new art series lens and this thing, I got it when it first came out. So the very first month that it was announced and released, I went out and bought it from Diamonds Cameras in Adelaide and this thing was so hard to find because everywhere I go, sorry, we're sold out. Oh, sorry, we didn't stock this yet. Um, so, Funny enough, I've got the 15th lens ever made, and <laughs> yeah, it's a privilege to get the 15th lens. I wish I got within the top 10 series, but oh well, besides that, it's an absolute sharp lens. It performs like prime lenses. It covers 24, 28, and 35. Um, it's at f2, so it's pretty much one of the fastest um, zoom lenses out there, but it's such a short focal length zoom. It's I don't really classify it as a zoom, but it's so convenient so I don't have to carry three different primes. But besides that, this lens is so good. I literally can't recommend you guys enough to pick one of these up for your full frame cameras. Um, if you get it on a crop sensor, it will act more like a 36 to uh, 52. So it's a very good focal length. So very good focal length for both full frame and crop sensors. Um, what else? Alright, my Nifty 50. Everyone's got to have a Nifty 50 in their bag. At least the cheapy ones. They're still great, so sharp. I've got the 50mm f 1.8D by Nikon. This thing's very old. Um, very sharp. Good for studio work, but I don't like the bulk air when you use it in outdoors. The reason I like the bulk air is because it's only a 7 um, aperture blade type of lens and its bore kit is not very creamy. It's very harsh in terms of the blur. It's not very nice and silky. Um, besides that, for normal users, I don't think you guys very um, would really recognize the difference between seven, frame, seven blades and nine blades, but since I've used nine blades a lot in terms of prime lenses, this thing does produce a bit of a nasty bore kit. Bore kit, which is background blur in Japanese, or just blur in Japanese. There you go. Um, 
Next, I have my 55 to 300, which is a crop sensor lens. I use this on my D5000 as um, when my camera body is too heavy to carry around or log around and in case there's an emergency that my gear does fail. So I uh, have this lens just an emergency and it covers most of the focal length that my full frame lens does anyway. So nice to have a little lens like this in the bag just in case. Now another lens I have in my bag is my good old kit lens that I got with my D5000 is the 18 to 55 f 3.5. Yes, it is. 3.5 to 5.6. Very old lens, very basic, comes with most kit lenses, packages, and um, most entry cameras will always get this little lens with it. Very basic, good to cover most of the focal length that you may require when your camera does go down. Alright, so let's go to the fun part, shall we? So let's go to my smallest body. My smallest body is my D5000. I keep this as my backup camera. Um, it's a semi-old body now, I got it back in 2009, 12 megapixels, 3 or 4 frames a second, and 9, no, I think 11 autofocusing points on this thing. Gets the job done, good little carry-on carry um, carry body, sorry, not lens. Um, does the job okay, low light, I wouldn't really push it past ISO 1600, but besides that, good little backup body. Very cheap to find that day in the market too. Alright, so let's go to my full frame body. So this is my D750, my good old D750. So this camera body is phenomenal. It's pretty much a FX, which is full frame. It's 24 megapixels. Um, it's 6.5 frames a second burst, 50, is it 51? I think 51, no, 51 or 53 autofocusing points. Um, 15 of them are crosshair and does the job very, very well. Um, this thing, you can literally shoot in the dark. I can push it up to uh, ISO 8000 to 12800 when I really need to, and I still get usable photos out of it. Uh, it has a tilty screen, so if you do overhead crowd shots for social photography or journalism photography, very, very useful. Love that idea. Um, some people say it's very um, it creates a weak point for the camera, but really I pretty much built the crap out of this camera and nothing's wrong with it, even the screen doesn't come off, so it's very durable. Um, actually, I added a battery grip into it, so it's a MD, MBD16, very nice battery grip, it's from Nikon as well, so it's weather sealed, it's metal. Um, I had a third party battery grip with this thing and I attached it to a tripod on a hill and literally it came apart and my camera rolling down the hill. But this thing's built like a tank anyway so it survived the uh, hill drop but I think that's the last time I trust that third party battery grip. <laughs> that happened the same thing to my D7000. So that's the Nikon MBD16. Very good battery grip and very very good for those who shoot all day and all night get one guys, it's worth the money if you can invest into it. Now, my third body, which is my recent body that I just picked up for a very good price. So, this is the Nikon D3S, and it's pretty much Nikon's old low light monster. So, this thing was released back in 2010, I'm pretty sure. But, it still does the job very well. It has 9 frames a second burst, ISO can go up to the same as the D750. Um, it's crazy. Like, listen to this burst, guys. It's beautiful. It's beautiful in terms of bursting, and it's crazy. But yeah, so this thing's built like a tank. It's a low light monster. It's 12 megapixels, which is a bit low for modern day DSLRs, but. To to be honest with you, I'm not really following that megapixel race type of thing. 12 megapixels is way more than enough for people to post things on social media because half of my clients that I shoot runway photography for, they don't really print their runway photos or put it in magazines and they just post it on social media. So social media, it's more than enough. 12 megapixels is more than enough for this camera to handle for social media. Um, yeah, and the files are a lot smaller as well. Since runways, I normally take smaller burst increments for every time the model steps the feet on the floor. It's 
it gets the job done. It's a lot quicker than editing a 24 megapixel file. So this thing is a god bless for my work. Love it. Um, but yeah, besides that, it's a terrific camera, built like a tank, fully magnesium alloy body, and it's heavy, but it's built to last. You can literally chuck this thing, and you expect the body to still work. Good thing. All right, next, flashes. I use a Mikey MK910. I don't use any first-party flashes at the moment because most of them are very expensive and these things does the job very well. I had this thing for about two years, the light bulb and it's still going well. Um, not very power hungry. I can get about 600 to about 800 shots with this flash, about um, 160th of a second to full flash power. It does the job very well and yeah, I shot it in the rain too, so this thing has not died on me yet. Another thing is my old Japanese Canon flash. Weird enough, this Canon flash will work with the Nikon flash. And yeah, it's full manual. It's my backup flash, like I said. It takes four double A's and it's very powerful, surprisingly. For an old flash like this, I can light up a whole, whole room um, with this flash. So it's a very powerful flash. Made in Japan, so what you expect? Japanese always have the best tech. Softbox. I have a ring flash softbox, so if I want to create some wow factor to my photography at my social events or runway behind the scenes type of shoots, this thing makes people go, oh, well, that's interesting. How do you get that round circle in people's you know, models' eyes or the makeup artist's eyes? And this thing does the job. I picked this up from Diamond Camera for about 50 bucks. It's all mag uh, magnets on the side, so it's very portable. So once you put it together, it connects together by magnets, and then once you roll up, it's so compact and you can just hide it in your bag and don't tell me it's not incorporated this time. Actually, yes it is. So let's put that baby back in. Um, strap, so I've got black rapid strap. I have a third party custom strap. And then those just to hold my camera bodies. Uh, batteries, lots and lots of uh, AA batteries on the flashes. I have at least 30 of them in here. Most of them are end loops, so they're all rechargeable batteries and they're so useful. In here, I think these are my flash drivers. Yes, they are. So I use Yogmo's um, flash triggers for my light strobes and flashes, off camera flashes. I need to buy a couple more of those just for my studio work. Um, in here, I have USB extension cables and tethering cables just for tethering work so if I want to preview my photos instantly on the laptop or my on my monitor I can do so with that. I have backup battery so this is a 10,000 milliamp solar panel battery it charges two devices at once and it has a torch you can build into it as well so very useful when you work in the dark. Um, I'm a massive Razer fan as well so good on you Razers you make very good products if I'm bored or waiting for my clients, I have earphones, I have the Razer Hammerhead Pros in here, and yeah, just listen to music while we wait, right? <laughs> um, I think that is pretty much it for my bag. It's just accessories like extra straps, umbrella holders, USB cables, um, phone tripod mounts, just so I can do selfies with them. <laughs> In case I do want to do overhead shots for Instagram or Snapchat, so I can just do that as well. But besides that, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much my bag. And if you guys were wondering, this is a Lao Pro AW3, uh, sorry, AW300 uh, roller bag. Um, it's very portable. It has a wa uh, weather shield in the water, so you can literally wrap the weather shield in rain or dust the weather to cover it up. Um, it acts as a bag and a suitcase. So you can literally undo this whole middle body part and it becomes a backpack. And then you can put the clothes in there if you're going domestic or international flights. So you can chuck the bottom luggage area into the bottom part of the aircraft and then you can bring the actual physical bag with you on board the aircraft. Um, but I don't think that worked for me very well anyway because Australia has its 7 kilograms um, on board luggage type of thing and my whole gear overall weighs about 16 kilograms. So a decent amount of extra cash to chuck up just to have extra stuff in flights. But 
and that's pretty much it. Um, oh yeah, so the laptop I'm using is a Razer Blade Pro, and it's a 4th gen i7, has a GTX um, 960 inside with a 512GB MSATA SSD, and yeah, one terabyte hard drive inside, so actually, I'll show you what it's like on that thing. So, alright, hang on, give me a sec. So yeah, this is my Razer Blade Pro laptop. It's a 17 inch laptop, very beautiful display. I think that display is one of the most accurate display I've ever used. Um, it was a lot more accurate than my actual MacBook Pro 15 inch 2011, the non-retina display MacBook. But it's so beautiful. Um, over here, so it has the Switchblade UI, so you can actually put shortcuts on here. This is your trackpad. This is the actual display, so this is the actual screen. Um, so on here, you can check your emails. Um, it loads up your emails, a secondary screen, uh, music player, uh, all that good goody stuff. So uh, what I've heard so far, Apple might be putting an OLED display in their laptops as well, which would be pretty cool. So instead of having a, dis a display over here, they'll have a display over the function key, which will replace all that row up there with a thin display for Siri, um, shortcuts for applications and stuff like that. It's all going to be in there. But since Razer's already made this, that's the reason why I went from a MacBook Pro to this laptop because the, short the shortcut functionality is so, so convenient. It's very quick for me, it increased my workflow, and it's literally, I, can't, I don't know how to describe it, it's a lot faster than my MacBook Pro, and from using a modern MacBook Pro 2015 one, I find this is just as fast. Windows 10 has really increased and improved their workflow and the user interface. Yes, there's still some glitches then, there and there, obviously, but it's doing a great job. I've migrated from Mac OS to Windows 10, and it was just a flawless migration, and I think I'm really enjoying it. But at times, I still have that little urge to go back to Apple because my dad still uses a MacBook Pro. And <laughs> I still love the actual gestures that the actual trackpad allows you to do. It just makes life so much easier. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, I am a total wreck right now because I'm doing my last assignments for uni. And yeah, so that's a quick overview of everything. So that's all my gear sitting over there. Um, a quick overview of my bag. Yeah, it's pretty messy in there. And yeah. Pretty much it. And the cool thing about this camera is you're able to preview everything on your phone like a GoPro type of thing. So it's really, really cool. Um, besides that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, just comment down below. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. See ya.